Hello, Skill Incarnate joining you for another Project Zomboid tutorial. We're in the dead of winter and um, stuck in our base at the moment, so we're going to be looking at, um, at animal husbandry, which is the process of getting animals and also the process of hunting. As it is winter, I cannot go out and actually do this, but I'm going to give you all the information you need to go out and hunt animals. Um, I, I'm Unfortunately, I because it's winter and because I'm surrounded by zombies every time I've tried to go and hunt, it's been quite dangerous. But um, we're going we're gonna to go over the process because you need animal hide in order to make leather. So when you go out of your base and you go and forage, you'll find one of the items I've got in the container here. Each time you forage, you have a chance of finding a different item. And it depends where you are as to what items you're going to get. The most common things that you'll find when you forage are tree branches. Now, the Hydrocraft mod adds several different types of branches, but these are all just branches. They're called boughs. Now, to you can actually turn these into tree branches by right-clicking and selecting the Make Branch option. This basically breaks off all the loose leaves and gives you a branch. You find bark, which is also an ingredient we use in making leather, and you find stones and also food. So the stones that you can find are both the chip stone and the regular stones. You also can find poop, and poop is what we use to get animals. So there's two types of poop. There's your game animals, which you hunt, and there's your herding animals, which you, you can actually get and domesticate as you'll notice that I have animals in the front of my base. So, before we move on to animals, I'm going to show you some of the food items that you can get. So you can get bugs, which are pretty safe to eat, except that they'll give you a penalty to your unhappiness. Um, you can also get berries, which I don't have here. Um, I throw berries out because there is a random berry which is poisonous and can kill you. Um, I don't eat berries, it's not worth the risk in my opinion. You can also get these leaves which you can eat like clovers, um, grape leaves and um, and various other um, types of leaves. Some of them are poison. So holly is poison obviously and um, the last type of food that you can get are these leaves which you need to dry using a herbalist table. So things like lavender and chamomile and nettles. So all of these items need to be dried using a herbalist table, and then you can turn them into a drink. So moving on from foraging, they're, they're just the different types of items you get. I'll do, I can do an in-depth tutorial on, on how to use these foraging items. Most of them are just either food items, or are used to, um, are used to, to create, create um, uh, your different uh, tree branches and, um, and also just different food items. So the main items you get when you forage are foliage, which is trees, tree branches, and leaves, which are mainly used as either food or to uh, as kindling for your fire, and also branches as, uh, for weapons. Um, food items, so your, your berries and your mushrooms. You can get a random berry and a random mushroom. Again, they are poisonous. I don't eat them. Um, other food items like clovers, which are safe to eat. And nuts, which you need to open with a hammer. You have to break them open. So the last item that you get is poop. And this is the one that we want to look at today. So when you pick up different types of game animal poop, you have a choice of things like boar poop, bear poop, deer poop, and small game poop. Now I'm sure you can get more, but they're the most common ones that I've found. With one of these items in your inventory, you can hunt the animal. You can do this anywhere. You put the, the item of food in your inventory, and then you need to have a weapon in your inventory, and you can hunt the animal. So, the easiest way is to have something like this wooden spear. Um, wooden spears are made out of tree branches, and I always hunt animals. I don't use arrows to hunt animals, because arrows are expensive to make. I always use wooden spears, and I recommend you do the same. Right-click on any bough or branch that you find when you are foraging, and you'll have the option to make branch. We'll make a branch. Now, with a knife or a chip stone, a chip stone's easy, you'll find that with foraging as well. Right click on either of those items and then you have the option to make a wooden spear. Bam. 
Now, I should mention if you have a hunting dog in your inventory, it gives you a 5% bonus to finding the animal that you're trying to hunt per, per animal. So I suggest you, you have at least one hunting dog before you try and do this. But if you have a lot of poop and you just need to get an, you haven't managed to get a herding animal and you just need some leather, this is the easiest way to do it. Don't do it in winter because your chances of finding an animal in winter, I don't think it actually does work. So, you have three wooden spears in your inventory and one item of poop in your inventory. Right click and you'll have the option to hunt the animal. Now, I'm going to make one more to show you. There we go. We have three wooden spears. Right click and you'll see here, hunt game with throwing spears, hunt deer with throwing spears, hunt pigs with throwing spears, or hunt bears with throwing spears. You can do any of those. You also need a pair of binoculars in your inventory. So the ingredients are the item of poop, binoculars, and three spears. You can also use a bow and three arrows, but spears are the easiest way to go because they're the most plentiful resource. Now, I'm just going to change my bandage so that it doesn't get infected, and then we're going to continue. So basically, that's how you get your animals. I need to find a uh, cleaner bandage. Sorry, we'll continue. I just don't want to get an infected wound. Um, so we have our leather working book here. Before we start leather working, I'll move into the next section of, um, of, uh, of a, uh, which is mainly animal husbandry. So the other type of poop that you can get is domesticated animals, animals that you can actually own and 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 domesticate. Um, the types of animals that you can have, and obviously there are more than this at the higher levels of um, at the higher levels of. Uh, uh, foraging so based on your forage level do that determines the type of animal that you'll get when uh, the type of animal poop that you get the four animals I have here are a cow sheep pigs and sorry cow goat sheep and pigs the most valuable type of animal in my opinion is the cow because the cow makes milk and milk can be used to make various different items including yogurt and butter. It also can be used to make a solution to to keep to keep mildew off your plants. But to get one of these animals, you need the the requisite foraging skill. So to get cow poop, you need a foraging skill of two. To get goat poop, you need a foraging level of three, I believe. Same with pigs and a foraging level of four, you can get sheep poo. It's completely random based on where you are. I don't have a male and female cow set yet, but basically to, to search for an animal, you need four things. You need a dog, which can do herding. The most common types of herding dogs that I've found are the Shiba Inu dogs. These are the ones that I seem to find in every single playthrough. I have a male and a female. And also the Corgi dog. Now, if you're really lucky like I am, in the first episode I found a dog whistle and got myself this dog here. The German Shepherd. The German Shepherd can do anything. They can be a pack dog, as, as I'm using him now. He's got... He's acting as a, as a large backpack. They can hunt, so they add a 5% bonus when you're, you're doing your hunting. They can herd, the same as these dogs here. I'm not using him because in order for him to herd, I have to take the bag off him. And finally, they are an attack dog. We're going to go into attack dogs um, in a future episode, but it's again, no miss has done an episode on this, and it's probably better than anything that I can do. Um, so... Basically, to, to get a um, to getting a herding animal, you need an item of rope. Now, rope can be gotten by having three items of clothes and turning those three items into sheet rope. We're, we're not going to do it because I obviously need my pants, but 
pick up an item of clothing off a zombie, such as a pair of pants. Right click on it and you'll have the option to craft a sheet rope. When you have three sheet rope in your inventory, right click on them and you'll have the option to make a rope. One piece of rope, a pair of binoculars which you've already got, the dog, and the item of poop that you want from the animal. So in our our example I have here a piece of sheep a piece of pig poo. So to find the pig, obviously we're in winter so this isn't going to work. You'd right click on either the poop or the dog or the binoculars and you have the option to track the animal. So in our case it's track lost pigs. Now this is not always going to work and you, I had to do, find several pieces of poo to find the animal. And what you need to do is do this enough times that you get a male and a female. When you have a male and a female animal, you are able to breed them. We're going to look at this next. So, to breed an animal, you need an item of food. And this is where the real beauty of, of breeding these animals comes in. The food can be rotten. They will eat rotten food. And obviously we know pigs eat rotten food. So, to breed an animal you need to have the male and female either next to each other on the ground or in your inventory. You need an item of water. So you need a water container and, and a bit of water. It doesn't matter if the water is tainted. Walk over the animals, right click and you'll have the option to breed pigs. I think I'm standing in the wrong spot here. There we go. So I have a pig, a, a male pig and a female pig right click on either of them and you see the option to breed pigs this is to breed a male pig this is to breed a female pig now one more thing to note when you are breeding animals you will use whatever item of food you have in your inventory you want to use rotten food you don't want to use fresh food because obviously um, fresh food you want to be saving for yourself so right click on the rotten item of food and you'll have the option to breed pigs. So we'll breed. This guy is going, he's now breeding the pig. He's feeding in the rotten cage and he's using the, the water from the watering can. We'll speed this up a bit. Bam. We now have three pigs. Now this is a little bit OP. With one item of food, I managed to make three pigs. That being said, you cannot eat baby animals. You need to grow these animals into an adult, so you need to feed them. We're going to take one baby pig, and we're going to breed that pig to be an adult, and then unfortunately that pig is going to meet its end. So, the one piece of advice I can give you in breeding animals, there are a few types of food that all animals eat, and that is cabbage, which is, again, as I said, cabbage is the easiest food to get, so get yourself lots of cabbage. Grow as much as you can, all animals eat it. So you can see here I have lots of rotten cabbage. Right click on the rotten cabbage, feed baby pig, all. So we're feeding this baby pig, Bang. So, not very realistic, but we've fed the pig to the point where it's now an adult. We have pig poo. Again, this is useful. You can turn that into, into um, compost. So, put that back in, in a container. Make sure you've got your pig poop. Now, you used to be able to use this poop to hunt more pigs. You can't do that anymore. They've changed the game. You have to find the feral pig poo to hunt pigs. Normal pig poo or normal poo of any type will not work. But this can be turned, poo can be turned into, um, into uh, compost. So keep that and we'll all go over composting in a future episode. So the last thing you do to the pig is um, murder it. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's a, it's a cruel world. This pig has to die. Right click on the pig. You don't need any weapon. I don't know if he, he punches it in the head until it dies. But in any case, kill pig. 
bam we have a dead pig now you can cook this pig and eat it as it is but that's a waste we're going to cut this this guy up so again you need a cooking skill of two to do this so obviously you, this is something late game but the two things you need are a meat cleaver and a knife now one thing I've been asked is if you use a meat cleaver to cut up zombies like I have been will it give you the infection you know what I keep a separate meat cleaver I don't ever want to find out that way so I have one meat cleaver for cutting up zombies and one meat cleaver for cutting up pigs if anyone wants to risk trying to get an infection to to prove me wrong and and see if if you can use the same meat cleaver you probably can go ahead but there we go so to we first skin this animal using a knife right click on the knife or the animal you'll have the option to skin them bam animal skinned we get one pig hide and the fresh carcass obviously it's raw meat we don't want to eat that right click on the carcass again bam butcher carcass now depending on the animal that you kill you get different items for a pig we get the best return because we get two pieces of ham some bacon I believe some bacon no we don't sorry we get we get ham we get lard and we get pork chops so where's enough food for me to comfortably go for three or four days four of these pork chops would feed me for yeah easily three or four days with this food the last thing that we want to do is we can right click on the skeleton that gets left behind and harvest the bones similar similarly to what we've been doing with zombies I keep these bones because we can make them into our favorite weapon the bone shiv which is what we're going to be doing in a future tutorial I'm going to show you that and there you go I know for a fact that gnome is covered animal husbandry but I, uh, I tried to go into it in a little bit more detail um, and give you a bit of context on, on how to breed the uh, the animals. I don't think he, he mentioned breeding animals, and to be honest, I think at the time that hadn't been implemented yet. So, in any case, that is animal husbandry. And that, once you have these animals, I won't lie, food no longer is a problem. You can cook this food up, you can preserve it, you can turn it into jerky, you can do a lot of stuff. Um, but basically, once you've got animals, your, your food problems are solved. That being said, I won't lie to you, it was an absolute bastard to get this enough food to get a female and male version of the animals. I still can't find the cows. So they'll, they'll, I won't be butchering the cows up. So that's it for, um, for my tutorial on animal husbandry. Um, there's not a lot of information on it. I struggled. I hope you found this useful. Um, and tomorrow... Um, hopefully I'm going to be hitting you with some more knowledge. We're going to do some leather crafting and we're going to get into some, some advanced weapon making. I'm going to get out there and we're going to kill those zombies and hopefully make this base a little bit safer. So if you like this video, please subscribe um, and we'll continue things and hopefully I'll, um, I'll start getting an idea on other games that you want me to play. Uh, I'm looking to do a series on seven days to die. But until then, um, skill and cut it out.